I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Ten Houser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain. Time to die. Yes, that's right, Warhammer is dead. Now, 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 don't cheer. Uh, really, I know a lot of us are going to keep playing it for a while, at least for the foreseeable future, but for all intents and purposes, this game is no longer supported, and, you know, it's, it's going to die. It's sad to say we're all sad about it, but, you know, most we can hope for is we don't completely splinter apart into several different games. But this is, you no. Know, a video not just about the sad fact that Warhammer is dead, but just trying to think about all the good times I've had with Warhammer over the years. I'm trying to narrow it down to, as far as I can remember, my top 10 favorite things about Warhammer. Alright, so let's get ready. Here's number 10. Uh, this is we divided into two parts. Um, this is I'm trying to narrow down the great roles. You know, you always think about the bad roles you've had, but these are the two great roles I can remember over the years. The first one was way, way back in sixth edition. <laughs> Thoric had just come out in the new, the sixth, the newer sixth edition dwarf book. My opponent had him hide behind a hill where I could barely see with one spear chuck at the back corner of his base of the um, anvil. I needed a five to hit, rolled it. Then I needed to roll a five plus to divide that hit up to Thoric instead of the, um, you know, the bearers or whatever the guards of the anvil. Rolled that. <laughs> And let's see what's Thor, strength, toughest five. So I needed to roll like a four to wound him. Then Thor had, what was it, a two plus or a four plus, three plus, something like ward save. He fails that. Then I need to roll a five plus to kill Thor, and I rolled that. So this, you know, conflagration of events again had me kill Thor with a 35 point. I mean, you know, maybe spear chuckers were 30 points back then. But anyway, 30 points like versus like a 500 point dwarf lord. It was a great, great moment. All right, the second one's going to be back in, was this early 8th? Uh, Skull Quest had just come out. I think it was just a Grill Quest. The last Grill Quest was only one day. And um, my second game, I was playing against John Gotti. And a lot of y'all probably know him from Universal Battle. Uh, <laughs> he, over, he, they, he broke through my Savage Art Biggin line. They fled, but they got away. Um, he busted into my bunker. They had my general BSB in it. I had three Skulkers in the unit. So, of course, he challenges, so I only have to fight one Skulker. We both have always strikes first. So he's going to kill the Skulker, which he obviously does. But I still get the strike. <laughs> I need five to hit. I roll one five out of three attacks. And he's like, oh, wait. you got to re-roll hits because of my, some kind of ability I have. I was like, oh, crap. So I rolled again. rolled a five again. All right, so I hit him. Now to wound, I'll need a six to wound, but on the first turn, sixes are, you know, killing blow for a Nazi Skulker. So I'll roll a six. <laughs> Alright, so he's got a four plus ward. He fails his ward. His vampire lord is dead, and I win the game because he starts crumbling all apart. Oh, what a great roll. He still gives me grief about that today. Alright, number nine, we're going to go to Brawler Bash 3. This was the last Brawler Bash of 7th edition. I got so tired of Orcs and Goblins. I'd gone, was it, two and eight with Orcs and Goblins at Brawler Bash the first two years. They were just so bad. Brawler Bash 3, they used the older version of Swedish Comp. And I was like, well, I, here's the thing. It was crazy that Orcs were getting comped lower than Dark Elves. So I brought Dark Elves in. I had, like, I think my comp was 2090 or 2070. 
I go into my first four games, I'm undefeated, and I lose a mirror match to Dark Elves in the last game, which, this is the bad thing about 7th edition, and like, a lot of times whoever won their first roll was going to win, you know, my Dark Elf opponent. We almost the exact same armies. He wins first turn, he's able to do his shooting to kill my, lose my shooting, and that was basically the game. But, you know, that was the best I've done <laughs> at Parlor Bash, and I had to go away from Orcs and Goblins to do it. I had to bring the Dark Elves. Uh, I beat two GT winners. No, I beat a GT winner and got a draw against a GT winner during that Buller Bash, so that's my, my fond memory of Dark Elves. <laughs> Number eight, Animosity. Wait a minute. Does anybody have any fond memories of Animosity? All right, these aren't fond memories, but I got to give a shout out to all the terrible times that Animosity has cost me games over the years from having a unit that had a Black Orc in it and then the other unit behind it those double ones and the Black Orc could do nothing about it and I lose entire magic phases over and over again to being forced repeatedly to charge with Wolf Riders so that they're useless because they're charging Demon Princes and Demon Griffs and all this other crap. The animosity, I'm not going to miss you. Alright, now this one, number seven, is also going way back to the magical year of 2005. Earlier that year, I just started playing Warhammer again after I'd quit for about almost five years. Uh, I was just playing like a small group from several months with just two or three people and it was fairly casual. I saw on the board there was like a, I think it was like, I think it was actually a Yahoo group this was so long ago where people would get together to try to create games. I've heard about the store called Off on the Games. They were starting a league around September 2005. So I'll join this league. I'll have more people to play with. I played my first league game. It was a big rude, rude awakening about, you know, when you're just playing with two or three people versus playing with other people. When you, you get used to playing two or three people and you don't really, you aren't really prepared to play in a larger group. And I went in my first game and I just got destroyed. Now, I played a second game after that and I actually won. But, you know, this made me feel like, well, I need to really diversify who I'm playing. I need to play more people. It's actually more fun for me to play more people because I think over time, for me at least, I get tired of playing the same people. But, you know, if you go to leagues, you can really be, become part of a larger group. And, and I can't recommend it enough. I mean, we haven't had leagues in a long time, but we have game nights and small tournaments and stuff like that, which is basically taking the place of leagues. But anyway, if there's a league near you, I suggest you join it. You'll be a whole new group of people to play. And you can find out we're not all scary. All right, number six, I'm going to be painting the Arachnorok. This took me two months to do. Uh, let me show some pictures of, of it painted and some of the process to get a better understanding of how much effort this took. Like I said, this took two months. And I... This was a track in 2012, early 2012, like January and February 2012. I had started repainting my whole Orc and Goblin army around 2011, January. And I learned a whole lot of techniques that I didn't use before um, to really repaint my army and improve my paint score. For this rock rock, there's a, there a video that might still be on YouTube by this Polish guy. Where he's using an airbrush to paint it, but I'll still be able to follow the steps. I use rugged brushes. And... I really, really liked how it came out. And I think it's probably the best thing I've ever painted. And it's probably the most enjoyable painting experience I've had. Uh, I'm going to miss the right and right because they still don't exist in Kings of War. And, you know, when 8th Edition withers away, I don't know if I'll ever get to use it again. Alright, number five is going to be the first time I play Once Bitten. I heard, this was back, I want to say, November or December 2012. It was an early, I was getting ready for Brawler Bash. He's got the video up. I'll try to link to it in my um, description for the video. Uh, I'd heard about it. he was coming back to the area. Uh, I was like, well, i got to play him. I want to be on YouTube. I want to be a YouTube star. <laughs> so uh, I would use my Grimgore list against his Beastman. And just watching his video and everything made me really want to make my own channel. And I think if I hadn't played him, if he hadn't moved back to the area, I probably would not have this channel today. I am... My main thing was that I didn't feel like I had enough content to have my own channel. And that's why originally I, um, me and Ben and Tom all, you know, we're all collaborating together for this channel. And I know Ben stopped because he doesn't want people to know his list and stuff. But come on, Ben. But anyway, that's beside the point. 
I had a lot of fun playing this game, and I want to thank OneSplit for this game, and thank you for giving me inspiration to start my own channel. Our right, number four grudge matches. Y'all know them, you love them, and I, I think the whole concept of grudge matches is one thing I really love the most about you know the grand tournaments because you can you know find somebody that has an armory similar to yours or somebody who's like a friend of yours you hardly get to play have like a real laid back game in the first round to really like ease yourself into the tournament and I love playing against other Ultra Goblin players I try to find somebody every tournament to play against in my first round because. I think orcs versus orcs is a orcs versus orcs, <laughs> orcs versus orcs. It's a it's a great fun matchup. I don't want to thank all my grudge match people, Gene Phelps and Matt Miller, and I played Sukes Fox even though, you know he's Skaven, dirty Skaven player. Uh, gosh, so many um, Billy Howell, all these great grudge matches I've had all the years. Hopefully, we'll still have lots more grudge matches to come, no matter what game we're playing. Maybe X-wing grudge matches. Who knows? All right, number three is going to be, well, Giants in particular, but mainly the, the Hillbilly Giant, fourth edition. I, one, thing about, one thing I miss in eighth is the fact that Giants are just so bad. I love taking Giants, and I'm, I'm looking forward to in Kings of War that maybe Giants will be viable in that. And I can start bringing my Giants again, because I'm going to lose my Ragnarok, which, again, is terrible, so I hardly ever take it. But, um, yeah, Giants... And orcs and goblins go together. All right, number two is gonna be joining the fancy lads. Now, basically, in the old olden days, uh, we had a small club called the Oak City Brawlers, and that's what Brawler Bash is named after. Now, when um, towards the end of seventh, I so like semi hiatus, kind of quit Warhammer because seventh was just really bad and. By the time 8th came around, most of our group had either quit and moved on to other games. Most weren't interested in 8th, so we didn't really have a club. Now, um, one of my friends who I played with, Ian, he had started playing over here at um, it was sci-fi genre back then. And he told me, oh, they have tournaments every couple months. They have they play games. You know, I've been playing there a lot. I, I knew a couple other people played there. You know, maybe I should um, start playing there if I wanted to get back into Warhammer. So started playing over there and after I want to say Brawler Bash 4 they started talking about making a club name and I was like I asked him you know is it okay if I join you know Ben and Tom said it'd be great we don't mind uh, they probably regret that now <laughs> but I just want to thank them for letting me join the group it, it reinvigorated my enjoyment of playing the game just like the first league game like when you for me when you expand the group of players you have and you have a good club um, it makes the longevity of playing last longer for me because I get tired of playing the left same two or three people. Um, also, the work we had started with Brawler Bash to bring tournaments to North Carolina and to the South, they continued it with Ben and, and Tom and Shane and everybody. And the tournament scene here is so much better than when we had nothing in North Carolina. And people were having to drive to other states to play. Small tournaments were like 20 people. Like now, tournaments all around us having 50 plus people, 60 plus people. It's it's a great time. It's really unfortunate the farmer is basically dead now, but hopefully we can continue this on for the foreseeable future. Probably at least a next two or three tournaments will be eight, and hopefully when we switch to Kings of War, we can start building back up to having big tournaments again. And that's all beside the point. I'm going to thank the fancy lads for letting me be part of their club. All right, now before we get to number one. I want to make an honorable mention to Arnold's battle report. Now, this is a friend of mine where he knows absolutely nothing about Warhammer. He does <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation. And um, I was like, you know, you should do a battle report with your Arnold impersonation. And I was after him for weeks to finally do it. And he, he did it for me. And <laughs> I padded it out and made it really annoying. I don't know if it was really received very well, but I want to thank him for doing that. And he wants to do more with other other things. And there's a Tuscan Raider report we could do that I think everybody would completely hate. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that. All right, now my number one memory. This will be the Brawler Bash Doubles Tournament. Uh, we had an extra tournament in Brawler Bash 7. 
on the Friday, and I got to team up with Malorian. A lot of you know him from YouTube. We had played against each other's brawler bash before that in like a practice game the day before the tournament. And I was telling him, you know, Malorian, double orcs are really, really great. I'm much better than single orcs. I convinced him, you know, a lot of people were, want, we were with other people when I was talking about them doing doubles, they wanted to do like warriors and orcs or something like that. And I was, I just convinced Malorian, double orcs, multiple doom, more than two doom drivers, more than two rock lavas, two savage orc big and hordes. What could go wrong? We had a whole lot of fun. Uh, I just want to thank Malorian for teaming up with me, bringing some glory to orcs. I'm also going to try to, <laughs> with the links to his, I have battle reports, but I don't think anybody watched them. Everybody watched his battle version of the battle reports. So I'm going to put the links for his reports so you can see what I'm talking about. This was just a lot of fun. It was like a, a true um, a moment of orc power. So this is basically the end of my top 10 moments. And like I said, I'm, I've got three more reports I need to make. I've been real slacked off on this because I've been so just like bummed out because I, you can already see the whole community is breaking apart from Age of Ex Sigmar. Um, I've got these three reports. There could be more tournaments for 8th. I'll play more games to 8th. But it's, it's basically dead. It's not going to be supported. It's only a question of uh, how long do you want to stick with 8th before it completely withers away and you have nobody left to play. But hope for now... You know, we'll keep playing it, but don't think of this as, um, well, this is a down video because 8th is, you know, basically dead, but try to think about the good times and try to remember the good times you played with 8th. No matter what you play, if you, you know, if you lose your mind to go play H with Sigmar, or you play Kings of War, or Flames of War, or X-Wing, or whatever game, um, I might really get into Pokemon. Who knows? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching this, and um, hopefully, you know, we'll have something to keep keep things going. Thanks, you guys, for listening, and I'll uh, talk to you next time.